Well, hello there. Today, we will do some uniform. We will implement the uniform into the game from the model that we have here. And yeah, let's dive right into it. The first thing you need to do is to go back to the video browser and watch my Zero to Hero tutorial because you need that knowledge to implement the uniform. When you're done with it, you are ready to do that. Well, then you have to make the uniform model because this is only implementation texture. I mean, um, ah, implementation tutorial. And yeah, let's, let's, let's just do it. Uh, so as you see, I've got a uniform right here, uh, which consists of top and pants, which are separate objects. And uh, they will use separate textures. Uh, so this will show you how to apply different materials, different textures to separate pieces of your uniform. Uh, we'll do animation, we'll do the texturing, the implementation, I mean texturing, applying the textures that I already made. Then implementation, all that stuff, we will not do any low poly or high poly modeling, nothing like that. We'll just go through the, through the implementation process and that's all. I will try to make it as simple and as brief as possible. But if you're watching it for the first time or, or if you're implementing the thing for the first time, it might be a bit confusing. So I'll try to explain stuff as best as I can. Right. So here is the, the uniform. Uh, first thing I'm going to do, uh, very important thing. I got this model from my friend uh, who prepared it. He made a great low poly for that and made some textures. Very important thing when you have a look here. Oh, by the way, I'm using the older version of Blender because the Arma tools is much better for, for this one. It's, um, it's working basically flawlessly. Uh, while the new version of Arma tools for, for Blender to wait and later sometimes gets some errors, sometimes crashes and is basically very, very bad. So I will stick to 279, but I will sometimes switch to 28 to show you some stuff where, where to look for, for certain features. Right, so as I said, we are here and the first thing we're gonna do when we get a model from somebody on the web, when we are making a model, we have to make sure that the UV sets are the same uh, before merging the objects. This is very important stuff because if you don't do that, your UV maps will disappear. And this should happen so, so often, like, 50% of the problems you get with no textures showing up on your uniform is this, is that you forgot to, or you, you know, you were merging some, some objects together and they've got different UV sets. Right, so as you see, this one has the UV map, that's the name of it, the, the, the name of the UV set, you can see that uh, it is mapped, it is UV mapped right here, when you go to UV, other UV sets, it's not. So that's the only UV set that actually uses the, that actually has the, the unwrapped uh, model on it. When you go to, to the pants, you can see that the UV set is UV set zero, not UV map. The name of it is different. And yeah. So here we've got UV set zero and UV map here and here on the, on the top, we've got UV set zero and we've got no texture here. So when you merge them together, the pants will be unwrapped like here and the top will not. Therefore, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the to the top and make sure that this that the UV map uh, is renamed to UV set zero and it contains the the UV map, right? So what we're gonna do is just rename it to anything and just rename this one with with the UV map uh, to UV set zero. So now UV set zero here has the UV map and UV set zero here has the UV map. When I merge it. I see them both together on the same UV map and they are overlapping, but it's all right because they will be a separate object. Uh, let's go back a bit and merge it. And let's apply some materials. Mm. So this is very basic stuff that was uh, explained in the Zero to Hero uh, tutorial. So I will just, you know, apply a material to, to the object. I will find the folder when, where I have my uh, textures, which is right here. I will apply the jacket texture to the top and I will apply the 
jacket uh, argument did that help right in this li nice little armor toolbox material settings box on the bottom the same thing you can find in 2.8 uh, but we have to go to object mode, select it, go to the materials when we add a material and when we make it a armor object, it is an armor object already. Uh, we go all the way to the bottom and it's right here. That's basically the same thing. So you have to find the uh, texture and the RV mat. Once again, if you don't know what's that, go to the, to the previous tutorial. Right, so I've got this. Um, this done, but I also have some buttons and the buttons are metal. So I will want to have them a little bit more shiny than the, uh, than the material itself. I mean, you know, the, the textile itself. So I selected all the buttons, hopefully. And what I'm going to do is to create a new material. Let's call it pop buttons let's give it a little bit different color assign it to the bottoms uh buttons you can see that yeah the material is applied and when you go down here you just go ahead and select the same texture because you want to use the same texture but you want to use a different rv mat if you want to have stuff a little bit more shiny or less shiny and that's also explained in the previous uh, tutorial. Basically, uh, you change some values in the RV material to make it look different. Um, hopefully you will see that when the thing is ready. Uh, the same thing can probably be done for the top of the trousers and the boots, but we're not gonna do that because, well, each material, it's a lot, it's, you know, some uh, resources. Uh, you know, it has some impact on the on how optimized is your model, and we will basically get rid of the buttons on higher lots, so they won't be rendered when you're looking f at it from afar. So there will this additional material won't even be loaded because um, you know the buttons will not be there. While here we cannot get rid of the boots looking at it from from the distance, so we're gonna leave it on a single material. That's a very, very basic optimization. And it's good to, to think about stuff like that when you're implementing, you know, uh, assets to the game. So right now I will do the same thing for the trousers. I'm gonna also change the color so we will know what's going on where. I'm uh, doing the same thing. So applying the texture first and applying the material. Let me just have a quick look if I apply the right material to the metal part. Yeah, the metal piece. All right. So there we go. We've got the textures and probably we can even export it uh, as a P3D to have a look if it's looking good. Just texture wise. Mm, right, so it will be somewhere. Right here. <clears throat> okay, let's try and launch a preview. There we go. We can see the top, but we cannot see the bottom. What happened? I will tell you what happened. We didn't match those two. So what we're gonna do is Control J to match them together and make sure they are load one. That's not really important for now. Um, right, so as you see, this one is, it's a little bit complicated because if you change it to number two, then this becomes pants and then because the other load because our oh, object builder is so weird, let's just not dive into it. It happened because they were not matched. We've matched them, we can export them now. <coughs> and when we open the model and check out the preview, 
Bulldozer. There we go. You can also see that the buttons are, are definitely more shiny than the than the uniform. Of course, that's the placeholder and uh, texture, but well, the thing looks alright. It has the textures where they should be. There is some very weird. When you see here, you know you can see this different this weird lines going from top to the bottom. But I think it's either due to lack of high poly or the texture. Let's see if we've matched them. I mean, if we got rid of doubles. Yeah, we did. Right, so then I will suppose it's a texture thing yeah you can see those lines here on the boots texture this of course will be fixed when you apply different you know if you have a high poly you bake it on low poly and it will look much 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 better so that's not a huge problem now but if you encounter something like that now you've got the solution all right so we've got the thing done let's save it and we can go to animating this stuff we are going to open armor rig um which you can get on the interwebs if you google armor rig for for blender that's what you will get it works both for the old version and the new version <coughs> what you're gonna do is copy and paste uh you know Control c Control v Control v uh nothing extraordinary here uh you're gonna paste it here select it uh go to the modifiers and by the deform and uh, not, not not apply just select the deform modifier then go to armoric here and what you do here is you basically uh apply the movement of the of the skeleton to the object you've just pasted here but hold on why am i moving the hand of the skeleton but it's not moving the hand of the of the object i mean you know of the uniform well because you forgot about something and i also did let's get rid of that let's go back to our uniform what we're gonna do to make it move is to transfer weights from the sample character so the game will know that this is hand i mean you know this is forearm this is upper arm this is neck and this is upper leg otherwise the game will have no idea how to do that it's not you know it's not automatic that when you get a model to the game it you know somehow knows how to wrap it on a on a skeleton you have to do it by yourself so what do you do uh you well the best way to do that is open new blender file uh let's import a pre p3d file which will be blender not blender armor free Oh god. Test character. There we go. So when you go to your Steam folder, uh it is in Arma free samples that you can download from Steam. Uh in the add-ons and there is this test character thingy and you will use it a lot when making a a character. So uh you go with the character example. There we go. Here is a character example. This is this is guy that is animated. If you copy and paste him to to Armor Rig, it will move around nicely with the skeleton. As you can see, it has some triangles uh, floating around. These are proxies. For example, um, this one is a pistol proxy. This one is a weapon proxy, if I remember correctly. And they will just load the model into this character object into this character model so you know the pistol proxy will load a pistol from from you know based on what pistol you're, you're having in your inventory i think that's rather simple it also has you know, stuff like vest backpack uh, head because you can see that this guy has no head <coughs> stuff like that okay um this here 
the vertex groups is the thing that is interesting for you in terms of uh animating stuff and making sure that you've got you know that, that the thing that you want to move is moving you know the part of the body that you want to move is moving um so what we're gonna do is to grab this model copy it to our object paste it and now we are going to transfer the weights to it but to do that we need to uh get rid of the proxies because uh, imagine that if you have a, for example, pistol proxy here or a weapon proxy here and you will transfer it to the arm, it will move not only with the arm, but also with the proxy of the weapon. So, you know, when for some reason your weapon, your right hand here is moving away from your, from the weapon piece of, you know, the areas where the where the weight is transferred for the weapon will stay with the weapon so you know the the sleeve will do very very weird stuff you don't want to do that and it's probably not going to happen on the weapon but it's happening right here on this uh, bunch of proxies there is like six of them here you know with backpack and stuff so we don't want to do that we want to get rid of those proxies we will add them on later so i select the model I want to sort it by name. There we go. There is the all the proxy, proxies are here. Select them X to, to delete them. There we go. I've also downloaded a add-on that allows me to remove unused vertex groups, which is very nice. And so you know, if I delete the proxies, they are no longer here. Otherwise, they will be here. Uh, <coughs> I just that's a small thing you don't need that to to actually make it work right so now what we're gonna do is to get rid of the insignia because we will add them on later get rid of the camo selection get rid of the hl selection the injury selections another insignia selection and there should be another one called personality but it's not here so it's okay so okay what i did was i removed selections that were key to change um, certain textures for example uh, right here you see the naked arms and naked legs they got the hl selection that i deleted in, in arma engine it's hard coded then when you have an hl selection it will change the color of that selection according to the skin color of the soldier so you know each time you pick a different soldier it will pick a different color so the hands will match the head which is a nice feature <coughs> but uh, you know you can see that there is a whole you know hand here with uh, with an HL selection and if you would transfer it to your sleeve it will be brown or you know the the, the color of your skin basically i mean the, the character skin it's not reading your skin color fortunately uh, <clears throat> that would be a bit creepy anyways we don't want to do that so we're just getting rid of those unnecessary things and now you might ask what's going on with the hands then are they added on by proxies or what well you will see we will get them copied and pasted right here later on for now, what we're gonna do is animate only the uniform. So, now the thing that I've been asked a thousand times, even though I made a tutorial for that, how to transfer weight from the sample model. Well, what you do is you select your uh, your base model. You know the the example character and that has all the vertex groups on it now you press shift you hold shift and you right click on your uniform so you've got both selected now but the object that is active so the one that was selected later is your uniform now you go to weight paint this is where you can paint stuff you know you can paint that for example this part is a hand it's called group but we're not doing that by hand. Fortunately, we will be using a 
weight transfer tool, which is right here. You have to have your tools open right on the left. Basically, first you have to have this window open. Go to tools, scroll down here and you transfer the weights. And that's not all because as you see, you now have the left arm selection, you know, the vertex group right here. But well, that's one. But how about the others? What about the legs and forearm and all that stuff? Well, to do that, you have to scroll right here and source layer to be, you have to change it to by name. So now it selects all of the selections by the name and applies all of them, right? So when you scroll to them, you can see that, yeah, well, most of them are actually quite nicely, <coughs> I'm sorry, quite nicely applied. Uh, so, well, that's not bad, right? Uh, let's see what are the results of it. You can hide the character for now. Grab our uniform. Go back to armor rig. As I said before, copy it, select it, select the armor chair and select the armor rig as the object that is going to follow. Now the uniform is moving with the skeleton, which is very nice. One thing that I don't like with these uniforms is that when you select your hand, they make something like that. I Well, if you move your hand, usually your sleeve is a bit shorter than your hand. If it's bigger, I mean, if it's longer than, you know, to your wrist, it's usually not following your, your the movement of your head. So I just get rid of this selection. So how to do that? We have to go to the to the weight paint. Scroll through those and see. All right. Another thing also uh, about the hand. See, this is the hand. You can see the hand here. The the areas that are you know more red than blue. Uh, are more affected by the hand movement while the blue areas are absolutely not affected by it. If I paint like th this here and move the hand around, you can see that it's following the movement of the hand, right? That should be easy. Uh, that's basically how the, how the rigging works, the, the thing that we are doing now, the, the rigging slash animating, however you call it. <clears throat> so, as I said, I want to get rid of this, but if you scroll down a bit, you can see that some of the fingers, like this one, also get transferred into the sleeve. And that's also something we don't want to have. So I usually also go through all of the, the fingers and remove all of them. Oops, bit too much. And one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. That's all right. And hand also. Okay, great. Okay, so let's see what happens now when we try to move it. Now you can see that it's doing this weird thing because, well, th these are. Those vertices right here that are not moving are not moving because they've got no weight applied to it. So what we're going to do is just go right to the forearm, forearm and apply some weight to it. Actually forearm roll, that's the, that's the piece that is interesting to us. And we have to do the same thing with the left arm. <coughs> mm, I mean the right arm. Uh, where is it? There we go. There we go. Still not perfect. Yeah, 
let's see if this one was filled inside. Should be okay. Yep, there we go. Right. So, all right, we've got the hand sorted out. I think that's the, the worst actually part of the waiting. This, this piece, the shoulders are also a bit of a cunt sometimes, but it's not looking bad. We can actually go to the object mode. So, yeah, of course, well, something like that will not happen. So you don't have to worry that, you know, it's clipping and all that stuff thing you want to be interested in is if this is looking good it's relatively okay because well you have to have some clipping right here there is no way of avoiding that the worst thing that you can do is blend those selections here together because then you will have a hole here which basically looks terrible as i said shoulder is important i think it looks nice except for this piece right around here with the collar Yeah, you can see some clipping with the with the of the collar, but we will see in a second. Yeah, also you can see like things like that are bad because you know they're, they're, the vertices are so unevenly weighted that they they just you know do those very sharp shapes when they are moved around. So we're gonna fix this in a second. Let's see if this hand looks. All right, there you can see that here on the bottom, it's also a bit weird. Let's see how the spine looks. This one is all right. This one is usually all right. The legs. Yeah, this one here is gonna be fixed. Okay, so I think we can start with the legs because it's rather simple to fix. So, to me, it looks like this selection should have a bit more area of influence. So, you know, the, the, the movement of the cloth will also follow the, the leg. Uh, the best way to fix something like that is to use the blur. So let's go to weight paint. Let's find the area that we are interested in which is um, this area. Let's go to the brush, blur brush, and just blur this area a bit here. It's still a bit uh, okay, so one thing is, well, this selection, but the other thing is that here there is a pelvis selection that will, you know, counter this and this leg selection. So we have to blur this one too. Uh, where is the pelvis selection? There it is. Yeah, you can see that it's very sharp, but, you know, there is, it's absolutely 100% here and there is like 10% of the influence. So you can see how the red pieces are staying more in place while the blue pieces are moving following the, the, the leg. So I'm going to blur those two. Oh, now you see that the movement is much, much smoother. It's never going to be perfect, but it's much better now. What we're going to do now, when we you are fixing them manually, you will have to normalize them. Uh, let's try and normalize all without locking anything. Normalizing is basically making sure that the sum of weights is equal to 1 or 100%. So let's say if you have this area here, there is like 50% of pelvis and 50% of leg, but you are never sure how many. So what the, what the engine does, it fills it to 100%. So if you have 40% of leg and 40% of pelvis on a single vertis, uh, vertical here, uh, it you know scales them up to be 50-50.
if you have three of them, it will, you know, it will just based on the ratio of them at the given moment when you're pressing the, the normalize, it will fill up to 100%. Right. It's, it's not perfect, but it's all right. I think we can maybe try and make the brush a little bit bigger. So it will blend better. The problem is that, you know, this starts to clip, but you can't avoid that, really. It's, it's never going to be perfect, especially in armor, because you are limited to certain amount of bones and you just have to do your best. I don't really want to spend too much time on it because the tutorial is more about implementation, but I also wanted to show you uh, the most common things that, will, that you will encounter during the weight transfer on the uniform. Uh, so, well, fixing them is usually just uh, blurring the stuff around it. You can, you know, you can also manually just paint the, the weights, but it's a bit faster this way and it gives you nice results. As I said before, there was a problem right here on the spine. So this was also caused by a lack of blur. Especially here, you might remember. Maybe I can show. Yeah, yeah, this is definitely something that can be fixed with with blur. The worst thing to to actually weigh properly are the buttons, uh, but they take so much time that I won't really dive too much into them. Yeah, that's much better. Still gonna clip here and there, but this can be fixed later on or can just not be fixed at all because it maybe it won't really be visible on the animation. <coughs> right. Okay, so that was the basic you know, basic fixing of weights. Uh, as I said, the buttons are way, way more complicated because what you have to do is, you know, go through all the selections and see what's happening with the buttons. And if they are part of two selections at the same time, it's probably not gonna work that good, especially on the hands. <coughs> <coughs> but unfortunately, the only way to know that is to just get it into game and see how it looks. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, let's say we've got this thing ready. So we copy the weighted uniform to our work for uh, work file, hold on. See, okay, what I did was I copied it, I pasted it right here and I've got this maze of stuff that I really don't want to have. This happened because it has dependency on the amateur and it copies all the objects that are connected to the armature. I'm copying, pasted it, pasting it into the my work folder, work file. I'm saving it. And you can see that it has all the weights here where they should be. Now, I can get rid of this. And since we've got our uh, uniform, first of all, animated, I mean, rigged, that's how we call it. Second of all, textured. Now we can, I think, implement it. And if I forgot about something, we'll see that in the game. So how do I go to the implementation process? Because, well, I have a uniform and what about the hands? What about the proxies that I told you about? And there is a very nice file in the Arma samples which is called, which is called a uh, character template. This is basically the character example, but without the uniform, there is only the hands and legs. Where well, most of the time you won't use legs, uh, unless, you know, the uniform is, has, you know, short pants or something like that. 
you definitely want all those proxies and you want those hands. But the most important thing, it's not only this, it's also LOD number two, LOD number three, and LOD number four. So, you know, all the resolution lots that you will need. Usually four is enough. Maybe if your uniform is very high poly, you want to have to go to about five resolution lots. I think about 500, seven, let's say 700 vertic verticals, vertices for the resolution lot four is okay, but don't take my, well, my word for it. You can check out the, the guidelines on um, uh, Wiki. Right. Apart from the resolution lots, there is also this, which is the pilot lot. Because in Arma, when you are playing a character, when you are not in a vehicle, you are, you know, running around your soldier, you are actually piloting him. You're not driving him, you are piloting him. Whatever. You can see in the Arma properties what are those LODs if you uh, just get lost at some point. So, and the difference between view pilot and different and the first resolution lot is that I, I deleted the legs, so there is no legs here. But the difference is that there is no head proxy on this pilot lot because if it was, you will see from inside your head and you will see the rear of your eyeballs. And you don't want to see the rear of your eyeballs in the middle of a firefight, right? So let's just stick with that. Okay, let's go forward. This one is the shadow load. This one is the shadow load number two, which is, you know, on the higher distance. This is the geometry. So basically how your soldier behaves, you know, bumping into stuff, which is okay. Well, this, this, this object right here is responsible for like 90% of your deaths in armor because you will get stuck on bushes on, and, you know, and windows and doors and whatever else and get shot. Uh, this is the memory load. We don't really touch the memory load. The interesting thing in memory load is I think that there is some, uh, yeah, the pivot points and I think the, the camera view is also here. So if you want your soldier to, to see if, you know, have better vision, just go here and you are happy, but don't do that. It might break the game and it might make, you know, life very miserable. Uh, this one is, I think, land contact. Yeah, it's a land contact. So it says that where you're, you're touching the ground with your feet right here in the middle of your body, but it doesn't matter because the animations uh, make you go up. Doesn't matter. Here is the hit points, which is the thing that makes you killed when you get hit. And here is the fire geometry, which is the other thing that makes you dead when you're getting shot at. <coughs> Doesn't really matter. But the important thing about this, it is that you've got all those things in one single file and you want to use those things. You don't want to modify them. You have the template. So now what you're gonna do is you have to just add stuff to the template. So, for, so you basically grab your uniform and copy it to the template and you export it and it's, and it's done. It's uh, a good practice to get rid of the legs, well, obviously, because they are hidden on, and under the, the uniform most of the time. I mean, most of the cases, not most of the time. And, you know, remove like as much of the hand as, as it's possible because you're not gonna see those pieces. Like here. It might be was a bit too much because, you know, when the animation of the weapons play, it sometimes might be better to, you know, have a little bit more of that hand left. Uh, but, you know, you definitely don't need the elbow and all that stuff up here. So let's say up here is the right. Uh, I have prepared myself a template like this before because, you know, what you have to do is go through all those other LODs and delete all those, you know, hands and legs, and we don't want to waste our time on it. So I'm just going to open my template. Yeah, and this is basically the thing that I told you about. Uh, everything 
you know, the, the body parts that are unnecessary are deleted. Right, so once again, I'm going to my to the object I created, to, to my uniform. I want to copy paste it right here and I want to save it as a different file so I don't overwrite my uh, template. I think it should be right here. I usually call this file like that with LODs. And okay, so the resolution, the biggest resolution is the first and the, of course, the pilot load because you want to see your uniform in the highest resolution possible. <coughs> then when we go to the second LOD, we want to do the old trick of decimating it and keep doing that until we are happy. Um, as I said before, we wanted to get rid of the of the buttons. So let me do that now. Damn it. Because well, this is like two hundred words, which will never be visible from the distance, and also a different material, so absolutely useless. Oh, I think I forgot about something. Yes, all right. Important thing. When you copy them, you have to match them with the LOD you're copying it, you know, those objects too. First copy them to the memory, then match them, and then you go to the next load, paste it, decimate it, copy to the memory, match it, go to the next load, paste it, decimate it, and you are done. Then what I usually do is I grab the second LOD Oh, come on uh, Okay I copy it and smash it so I won't forget about it and I paste it to the I paste it to the shadow lot. I selected it by accident, doesn't matter. doesn't matter really. And what I do now to make the shadow a bit uh, you know less prone to clipping with the uniform, I press Alt S. I get this triangle out of here, okay. Alt S and make it a bit smaller. So you know it shrinks a bit inside. It should be enough. If it clips, we will spot any issues later on. So let's copy it to the first resolution node and see if it's the pink. Okay, let's select it. Okay, it looks like it's clipping a lot. You see, the blender is very weird because if you look at it from the distance, it's clipping all everywhere. But if you look at it from the, you know, a bit closer, it's not clipping anywhere. <coughs> okay, I press Alt S to shrink it a little bit more. As you can see, the it's getting weird. I think that I'll just grab the area selection tool and hide those pieces that are sticking out inside and I think I'll just get rid of the the, the shoulder pads manually because they are not really that important on the shadow. Shadow load is a terrible thing to do. takes time and it's not really bringing too much effects. I think I've just, yeah, I've moved the thing away a bit and I'm gonna suffer now. Okay. 
and it's terrible because you have to hide everything inside otherwise when you don't it will clip and when it clips it's absolutely terrible okay well fuck it you know when i selected this piece and moved it back a bit i've got my selection tool and i moved everything back and now to fix it is just pain in the ass so i will select maybe my third load no that's too low poly i will select my second load once again and without the color because as i said it's not that important because usually you don't see the shadow of the color being casted and ah right i was going to get rid of the polygons too so i think the easiest way to do that would be to select them by the seams yeah let's remove the faces the same thing with the under for um, the, the face an interesting word oh they are actually closed already you know as i said in the in the previous tutorial you have to have your uh, shadow lot closed this is weird <laughs> right i i get where it's coming from but that's not really that necessary here right once again shrink it inside copy it go to lod1 paste it triangulate come on don't clip okay all right once again it's time to hide this inside damn it when when you used alt s those areas on the sleeves will act strangely i will go back a bit and get rid of them because you've got those inside faces so when you add s those inside faces are getting bigger actually what we are going to do is get rid of them eh, all right Okay, there we go. The same thing with the other sleeve. Oh my God. Right, I think I'm gonna, yeah, I've got to fix this topo too. Right, there we go. Obviously, I have to scale it down and see how it looks now. Yeah, I think it will be all right. So I'm copying it, copying, deleting, going back to my shadow, getting rid of the old one, pasting and that's quite much it because the triangulation and make it sharp will happen later on uh, before that it's also good practice to remove those materials from this one so you know it won't apply the material to the proxies otherwise they will be visible and we don't like that this one should also be here and this is all right i forgot to match this okay let's have a quick look looks good to me let's save it we've applied all the loads here we can export it to the m27 p3d it can take a while
not sure why it's taking so long it is all right it's 11 megabytes so okay let's see how is it looking now okay there we go you can see that the hands are here the pistol is here the flag on the back is here there is no head but you cannot see the head here and well to me it looks perfect so let us save it and go to the very nice and quick process of writing down the config files i am using a very basic classes that i've got prepared once again we are doing the same thing that we did on the headgear we grab the model cfg from the samples and we rename i mean you know we add the class of this name the name of the model not the name of your uniform class then the name of your model p3d file we add it right here to inherit from the rest of the you know to inherit from the male skeleton of armor free if you don't know why go back to my previous uh, tutorial all right i've got it split into two different hpps which is uniform config consisting of the uniform class um this one was called code but let's go with m27 because it's the name of the uniform what you have to specify here is very short thing which is basically a copy paste from from a sample file simplified to things that i actually need you can you know i will upload it in the video description so we can use it but it's an only hpp so we'll have to include it later on if you don't know anything about class inheritance hpps and all that stuff go back to my previous uh, tutorial right so it's using macros macros are all right so i will have to copy the macro file from here no i don't whatever all right because it's only a uniform class uniform classes don't have names that's also a funny thing for now important thing is that you have to specify the model but as you can see that's not the model of the uniform that's the model of some suit pack original f this is the thing that when you somehow manage to drop your uniform out of your soldier it will appear on the ground as a packaged uniform nobody does i mean very rarely i've met any i mean i've seen any mod that will actually make this model of you know packed uniform on the ground because it's next to impossible to have the uniform lying on the ground in the game you've probably haven't seen them too often lying on the ground they are of course in the in the arsenal or in the, some crates but on the ground almost never so just don't waste your time doing that use the vanilla one then you have to specify the picture that you will see when you create the you know when you go to the arsenal or to your inventory so we leave that alone it should be changed to you know to the m27 but i haven't created it yet so i will use the previous one right here you have to create a uniform class inside the item ifo you have to make a new class that you will have to remember because this class is not this class this is a unit class and this is a uniform class the very weight thing but each uniform has to have a corresponding unit unit you know basically a soldier that is carrying this uniform it's very weird but you have to do that you have to have at least one soldier for one uniform yes right uh uniform model this is i don't even know what's that it doesn't really matter because also a funny thing the model of that you've created you don't specify in the uniform uh, class you specify in the soldier class later on you'll see uh, all right uh, this is container class this is a very nice thing which is how much equipment you can put into your uniform which is 70 units of something uh, you can go you know supply 100 and it will carry 100 and it will it will carry 
100 units of whatever you want to carry. The mass of the uniform, which is, you know, what you are carrying, and the armor of the uniform. And I think that this should not work, but it's a hit points thing, it's a difficult topic, we are not going into that now. Let's go to unit config, which is the more interesting part. As you can see, this thing that you've specified in your uniform config, now you put into your... Yeah. You copy that and you put it right here. It's inheriting from the base soldier class that basically gives that guy some uniform. It's... It's just you can inherit from a basic soldier and will also work but if you now keep developing your mod you will get more and more assets that you want to give to your soldier so then you can you know create a base class and you know once again inheritance just go to the headgear zero to hero tutorial it's explained there uh, and this class is only made to to be easy you can you know have something like man uh soldier it's just something like that. I'm not sure about that. Let's just stick with what it is now. Mm. Here, here you specify the model, the model of the uniform. So the thing that you've got right here in your folder, and you've got also right here in your model CFG. Uh, also, you might be wondering. Well, I've put the class M27 here, so how does the model config know that I'm referring to this model while well, there is no path here? So there is no, you know, north uniforms, blah, 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 right here. Well, the model CFG only uh, is applied to the folder you are in and all the folders down the line. So anything in data and like if there was a model in here in data, it will also work. It only is looking for the model names specified here but it's not never going up so if you have a model of m27 in a different folder like in for example here it will never find it right back to this as i said you have to specify your model 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 path which is basically nf uniforms m27 m27 p3d the picture once again is the same thing as before but i think one is the arsenal icon and the other is the icon that you will have on yourself when you were, I mean, in your inventory when you have the uniform on yourself, but I'm not really sure about that. <coughs> this is something that you can, you know, read through on the wiki page. It's not very important. Uh, the class is this thing. So. This class is connected, you know, the uniform class is connected, uh, the unit class is connected to the uniform class through this line. And the uniform class is connected to the unit class through this line. Right? So this is here and this is here. So they are both connected to each other. Therefore, you need one unit for one uniform. This is weird. It's counterintuitive. And I don't like it, and it makes me angry, and I sometimes cry at bed, when in bed, because of that, but I just, you know, embrace it and go with it. Okay, so we are quite much finished with the config, as far as I'm concerned. The only thing we have to do now is go to our base class, scroll through all that gibberish, and make sure that we've got this included. Spoilers, you can see what's going to happen on the next Northern Fronts update. This is something wrong. No, 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 wait. This is not what I'm looking for. Or am I? Uh, yeah, this is something I am looking for. Right, so I am in M27. And here is my unit config, right? So I'm unit uniform config. Okay, I've got it here too. And I want to do the same thing right here in. Oh, no, 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 M27. 
unit config. So what I'm doing now is I'm including the you know the HPPs, the small small text files, to the global head config file, so they will actually be loaded into the game because otherwise they will never be read, and you know the, the engine would just the, the the compiling engine would just leave it leave it be. Right. So to me, it looks like it's time to pack. Let's find our NF uniforms and crank it, crunch it. Unfortunately, we have to wait through the whole folder to be crunched because I am too lazy to split them into different folders and there isn't really that many uniforms. That's what I keep telling myself since there was one uniform till now, like we have like 20 of them. It doesn't matter. It's going very quickly and my PC is just very fast. Yes. Yeah, our model was actually built. Sometimes the PBR project tends to get hanged on something and when you press right here and press enter, it goes, you know, it goes, goes on, it unhangs itself, itself. Right, meanwhile, I think it would be a good idea to close my Blender files. Wait, I promised you to show you stuff in Blender 2.8 and I forgot about that really. Well, okay, two things that you need to know about Blender. One, I already showed you in the toolbox things, the, you know, the material things. <coughs> Another is obviously the object properties, but that's very basic stuff that you should already know. And another thing you might be wondering where to find is the weight transfer. So how to transfer weights from a object to another one. As is, we do it exactly the same way as we did in Blender 2.7. So we select the object with weights. Okay, so let's make it look like we're actually doing this. Okay, let's select this object. Let's assume it has some weights. Let's shift, select the object that we want the weight transferred to. Go to weight transfer, weight paint. And right here in the weight, sometimes it's in the bottom, sometimes it's in the top, depends on your on your setting. You go to weights and you have to transfer weights here. And once again, you have to go and select by name. If you don't do that, it won't work. And you will keep asking me on the Discord, why is it happening to me? Really, so many people ask this, ask this question. Come on. Right, I think the PBO project is done. It's not, come on. I know what's happening. I know why it's taking so long. Oh, come on. There we go. Okay, so the problem is... That's some obscure object. When you go to the... To, you know, ah, oh, I got it now. Well, this is also something that might happen to you. So I will go ahead and explain it to you. If thing manages to launch. I heard it before. I actually forgot about one thing that is quite important and this bug of, you know, uh, models being crunched forever is caused by one thing. When you go to your shadow volume, and your shadow is not sharp and closed <coughs> uh, you will have this problem because you know as i explained in the in the zero to hero tutorial you need to have your shadow closed and sharp and triangulated okay uh, one thing i did here was i found a proxy selection i selected all of them right here i press ctrl x to cut them out now I can safely uh, triangulate this boy. I can close him first. Now I can triangulate him and I can sharp him with U and I paste them back. And the thing, uh, I mean, the reason why I did that was because when I select, uh, when I apply sharp edges and triangulation and, you know, all and closing, to an object, it becomes a shadow 
thing well how to explain it it's not really that any object that will be triangulated and sharped uh, and will be a closed object will be a shadow on the shadow lod so if i selected this well it is already triangulated there is no way of closing it anymore than it is now and if i made it shadow it will actually cast shadow and we don't, don't want that to cast shadow it's a triangle floating in the air okay so it's a base very very base class right here and there we go it's right here it's looking good for now let's try in one round it moves nicely it doesn't clip i think it's actually a very nice uniform if i think about it i was I am actually very surprised that it's looking so good. Let's have a look and see how they walk. Move, move, move. There we go. The, sh the, the shoulder right here may be a bit weird. Oh, also one thing that is worth checking. Trying to go prone. It's flawless, almost. Can see some little uh, issues with the shadow around the knees. And crawling. I think it's nice. One thing I didn't pay too much attention to is how they how the buttons look. Because maybe they are just fine. Yeah, the buttons are actually quite nice. I think that's looking very good. Right. So I think there we go. Very important thing. You have to learn that command if you really want to make modding. Important. Without that, you will not get your modding license and you will be captured by the Bohemia Interactive Police. Well, with this thought, I think we should end this tutorial. I I'm quite happy with the results. I hope you've learned something today. If you have any questions, you can find me uh, on Northern Front's Discord, on There Is Only World Discord, or just catch me through these YouTube videos. So, well, thank you everyone and have a nice day.